Okay, uh, I'm Tim Merrill from Digi Capital. Um, we're an investment bank for games and apps focused across um, Europe, America, and Asia in particular. Um, we help folks with selling their companies, raising money, strategic reviews, and industry analysis. So we're going to talk a bit about some of the analysis of the industry now. Some of the broad themes, um, we've just released our Global Games Investment Review for 2014 last week. Our new forecasts are that we think the industry as a whole will go over 100 billion by 2017. The growth is coming out of mobile and Asia. In terms of M&A itself, uh, last year was a record year, $5.6 billion of acquisitions. Uh, if you actually include uh, the management part of Activision Blizzard, uh, it's actually more like $7.9 billion. Um, the previous year was around four. Asia is a huge driver for that. We'll come back to that in a second. Um, uh, in terms of the overall economics, a lot of the growth in the markets coming out of Asia. So quick show of hands, how many folks here have spent a lot of time in China, Japan, or South Korea? Okay, very small number of hands. You people need to get out more. Um, you, you need to talk to folks like Steve Gray from Tencent, like Kurt Q. Lee from Gameville. If you're actually going to be serious about making a success of your company, you need to be looking at Asia. In terms of investment, it recovered slightly from the previous year to around a billion, um, uh, and mobile and tech and gamification dominated. Uh, games dominated mobile app usage and revenue. I'll talk about some of the numbers there in a second. And lastly, over-the-top messaging with apps like WeChat, Kakao, Line, are a new disruption to the industry. But to give you a simple stat from the, the report, um, we did a detailed analysis of how mobile messaging apps are beginning to dominate some domestic markets. In Korea last week, 40% of the top 100 uh, iPhone apps were on Kakao Talk. Huge opportunity, but also a challenge. So, mobile is going to take the industry to 100 billion by 2017. If you look at the different sectors and the growth there, what you see are is that everything else is doing okay, online is doing okay, but what's going to take the industry over that number is mobile. And regionally, a lot of the growth is coming out of Asia. And if you think about this, of the markets that you're in, uh, Asia and Europe combined uh, will be over 80% of the revenue of the market globally. So if you're focused just on the states, it's fine for now, but if you're thinking about the long term for your company, again, Asia is extremely important. When thinking about M&A and investment, last year was a record year, 5.6 billion. Nine of the 10 top acquisitions last year were by Asian buyers. So again, if you're a mobile games company that's doing well and growing, and you're not building relationships in China, in Japan, in Korea, then your chances of getting a good exit are much lower because you're cutting out a lot of the market. The IPO market's also been interesting. Um, again, I, I imagine not many folks in this room would know that there have been 15 games IPOs in the last three years. But 13 of the 15, Asia. Again, you need to look at that market if you're thinking about raising money, if you're thinking about selling your company, if you're thinking about growth. So within M&A, and within investment, what's been happening? Well, this is a look at the aggregate by sector. And again, we, we analyzed all the sectors in detail, all the transactions, they're all in the report. You can, you can go and have a look. But mobile's dominated both M&A and investment. In M&A, it's a clear runaway leader. By far, in terms of volume, in terms of the value of deals, it's all mobile. It's not surprising, it's where the growth's coming from, it's where the profits are. It's what, where the drivers are, so it makes sense that people are making land grabs in these markets. And in particular, it's important that a bunch of these deals have been pan-regional. So whether it be across Asia, I mean, Supercell is the obvious one to talk about, but also a lot of domestic deals. So a lot of deals within China, within Japan. So looking at those markets, again, internally important. For fundraising, uh, again, mobile's been dominating, but also the tech space, again, particularly around mobile, has also been doing well. Um, the thing that I would say is, actually, a show of hands, how many folks in here are from corporates as rather than independents? Okay, small hat. So for the few guys in this room, if you're thinking about raising money, raising money for a games company, even if you're in mobile from a VC right now, is difficult. Because of what happened after the social bubble burst in 2011, VCs are harder to raise money from. You should be talking to the corporates. They come with strings because they'll want some strategic value, but they can give you money where others can't. So if you're thinking about investment, you need to be thinking about relationships with some of the corporates. 
for independence, if you're in the mobile space, you're the right place to be raising money. The thing you need to be showing are metrics, detailed metrics, because before anybody's going to give you a penny, they're going to want to know that actually you're performing. It's not just a matter of monthly active users or daily active users. It's, it's three-day um, retention, seven-day retention, um, uh, conversion rates, lifetime value. You need to know all of your numbers if you're going to raise money from anybody who's going to be selling your games company. In terms of the public markets, what mobile has been driving them. And again, some of the Asian IPOs have been driving them. Now, the, the important line to look on this mess of lines here is the red one, which we, again, we, we have comparables for all of the individual public games companies globally. The red line is the mobile line. And even though there was a bit of a spike in the, in the middle of last year, the overall trend for, mo for mobile for public companies is up. So again, in terms of thinking about exits, thinking about M&A, that's where you should be looking. What's been happening is the market split into a two-speed market. What we call the big V is split the market into value and volume markets. The value markets are the old markets, the console, subscription, MMO, some of the geographic markets. Volume markets, where everybody in this room is, mobile, mobile social, over the top, that's where you've got much higher user numbers. You know, basically, Peter and Tommy were talking about the user numbers before, so no, there's no secrets there. Lower ARPUs than the other markets, but also lower costs to develop, much lower costs to develop, even now. Higher profitability, higher growth rates. Basically, where you are is the right part of the market to be in. In terms of games as, as part of the apps market, again, it's important to think about how dominant games is within the app space right now. If you think about usage, blended across iOS and Android, tablet and phone, you see about a third of usage. For tablet standalone, it's about two thirds of usage. So that's great. When it comes to geographic markets, it's the States, Japan, China, South Korea, the UK. Those are the important markets for making money. But when you look within apps, last year, games accounted for over 70% of all apps revenue globally. Um, and if you, the overall market's growing quickly, but, but games as a share of overall apps has also been growing. So again, great space to be in, great space to invest in, great space to look for exits. Now, free-to-play and communal gameplay have been changing dynamics across sectors. Now, mobile has historically been more of a single-player activity. It's moving much more in the multiplayer uh, direction. So more communal gameplay, both competitive and collaborative, is where things are going for everybody. But also, obviously, free-to-play, a huge part of the market. Now, paid, you can still do well with paid. There's nothing wrong with it. But in terms of where the market's going, free-to-play is where the market is to a large degree, and that's only going to increase. Again, we've got forecasts in detail of revenue as to how that split's going to look going forward. And the reason why these, this is changing is, frankly, money. Uh, if you look at the comparison of a single-player game versus a uh, multiplayer, player versus player, and player versus environment, in some cases, you're seeing up to 13 times revenue uplifts. People engage more. They get more involved in it. They play more. The phenomenon that happened in MMO, it's the same thing. It's basically that deep engagement, that long-term value, that's where the value is in relation to mobile, and that's why so many people are now moving towards more communal experiences. When it comes to consolidation, so uh, again, uh, in terms of the independence in the room, is anybody thinking about selling their company at the moment? Okay, so basically you're all startups raising money. The people on, these, on this chart, the companies on this chart, are the ones you should be thinking about building relationships with now if you're actually early stage. And the reason being is these are the guys who are going to end up doing the trade, the trade buys. And the guys at the top, obviously, are the ones to try and build relationships with today. But actually, if you're building a company and in two or three years' time you're going to be selling your company, then the guys in the middle and lower down, actually, those are the ones to build the relationships with. Because if you'd spoken to, to Tommy and Peter three or four years ago and, and you know, you'd been thinking about selling your company, well, you know, there's no way they could have thought about buying you. you know, now, they're in a position where if they wanted to, of course they could. So the, the people who are growing, the ones that are changed, this whole pyramid is changing all the time, changing incredibly rapidly. So building relationships, understanding the dynamics as to which of these players are buying which companies for what reasons, that's really important for you as an independent. Uh, so lastly, uh, I guess the, the, this is not going to be surprising. This is a consolidation curve for um, the games market. If you're an independent in the mobile space and you're thinking about what you do, you shouldn't be standing still. You should be thinking about two things right now. 
One, M&A, thinking about selling your company. If you've got the metrics, if you've got the traction, if you've got the brand, if, if you're thinking about Peter's world, then it's a great time to be thinking about selling. Again, the supercell deal is the obvious poster child deal to talk about. But if you aren't there yet, then just building organically may not be enough. And so thinking about how you raise money, how you partner, how you get help to grow into other markets, now's the time to be doing it. So I guess lastly, if you want any more information about any of this stuff, go and have a look at the report. It's all there to read. Um, and feel free to catch me afterwards. Thank you.